Hello and welcome. Today I'm in the tier 9 Soviet destroyer, the Udaloy. I'm using these modules and commander skills. Also, I would like to ask that if you hear any audio problems like crackling or the audio being too quiet or similar, then please let me know. Anyways, this is a match on the map Mountain Range and uh, I headed towards the A-Cap because that is where I spawned. I went into the cap and, uh, well, I started turning. Unfortunately, I was spotted by an an enemy destroyer, which is a Benson. Oh well, um, the good thing is that the Benson actually used the smokescreen here, which means that she isn't spotting me anymore, so I can turn around and start running away. I don't really want to do a challenging fight here, because the Benson might come for me, and uh, if she torpedoes, you know, I should be able to dodge them, but I might not, and I don't really want to gamble like that right now. Because it seems that my carrier is actually coming to this side, which means that, you know, if I just wait enough, to, enough time, the Benson is going to be driven out at least partly by the enemy carrier. And the other thing is that even if uh, the carrier itself doesn't um, push the Benson out, I can stop and smoke and keep shooting at the Benson without the Benson being able to uh, shoot me in return. At least as long as the carrier actually tries fighting the... Or spotting the DD. Like right now she isn't. The Benson is definitely outside of that smoke. But the carrier is bringing the dive bombers around. So there's the Benson. I'm gonna head into the cap zone. I'm gonna torpedo. And I'm gonna start smoking and slowing down. Because uh, I will have spotting um, from the carrier. And uh, well, that just means I can sit, sit tight in my smoke screen try to dodge the torpedoes, which should be spotted by the planes, and just whittle down the Benson's HP because she left the smoke screen. And see, the carrier is actually spotting, which is very, very useful. Okay, so she spotted the torpedoes. This means I am fairly safe now. I, I turn my uh, ship because I don't want to risk slowing down and speeding up, because I might have... Um, noticed the direction of the torpedoes slightly off and that could have actually you know made the torpedo be on point on point on my dd and if you slow down and stop that takes a lot of time and it can lead you to be unable to dodge torpedoes it's kind of like if you have torpedoes incoming you want to be a little bit diagonal until the torpedoes are very very close otherwise it'll be difficult to try to dodge them Anyways, the Benson is gone, I am capping the base, and I am inside smoke screen, and I have enemies that I can shoot from here, so I'm just gonna do that. That was very well played by the carrier for the spotting of the Benson. That definitely helped out a lot, otherwise this fight with the Benson could have taken either quite a while, or it could have lost me a lot of HP. Because, you know, if you have two DDs fighting inside the cap zone, it's not the DDs that usually are the danger to one another. It's the other ships around the destroyers. So if if I shoot my guns uh, to shoot the Benson, I'm spotted by the other sh uh, ships as well. And you know, those Ibukis, Tepetses, Yamatas are going to shoot me. And it's difficult to dodge shells from many ships at the same time. Although, you know, as a Soviet destroyer, if you have speed boost up, if you are at like 12 to 14 kilometers, it doesn't, it isn't as difficult. Like right now, I feel fairly safe, um, mostly for two reasons. One is that one of our battleships, no sorry, two of our battleships are pushing with me. And the other is that I am far away enough from all the enemies that I should be able to either dodge a fair amount of... Um, shells or at least um, many enemies should miss because hitting soviet destroyers isn't the easiest thing okay so let's try to burn this yamato uh, i know that terpet should be burning wait no never mind she isn't burning after all anymore well let's set another fire on her i guess come on fires come on show me what you got I am actually heading in the direction of the Tirpitz. She is firing at me, but it seems that her salvo missed completely. Or at least the prediction 
where she thought my ship was going to be was not accurate enough because it seemed like the dispersion was really 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 bad and that that happens if you if your uh, aim is off target so i switched to ap here because i want to shoot the upper belt of the tippets i don't actually know if that's a very good idea notice where i stopped though i am 6.4 kilometers from the tippets and i pay constant attention to how close the tippets got she never got within six kilometers of me which means that Regardless whether she uses torpedoes or not, those torpedoes will definitely not hit me. So I don't need to, you know, be wary of that and try to keep moving because of it. Also, there are planes on top of me, so... It's a good idea not to, uh... See, torpedoes incoming and they expired right before me. This one was actually calculated. This one wasn't a mistake like, uh... Or, you know, luck like it was on the Tirpitz game yesterday. So, I'm gonna switch targets, because I don't want to really deal with any of these carrier planes right now. Udala's anti-air isn't very powerful. And, you know, since I am inside smokescreen and I can fire at an enemy, I might as well just do that. So, Yamato, please burn. Oh, oh, Cyclone has begun. Well, it does say that Cyclone has begun spotting ranges decreased to 8 kilometers, but honestly... It takes quite a while, it's like a minute or two before it actually gets to that point. Come on, another fire on the Yamato, please, please, fires, please. Come on, fires, yes, excellent. Now I need to hope that she doesn't use Damekon. And let's try to uh, set two other fires on another battleship. Okay, it seems the Yamato actually did use Damekon, so let's try to set her on fire again. Oh, I can see the Lexington. I guess I'll head in the Lexington's direction while shooting at the battleships. Come on, fires. Come on. Need for need more of them. Please. Excellent. One more on this Yamato, then I switch targets again, because I just want to deal as much damage as possible. Uh, it's... To e it's easy to set fires on the um, second and third... Uh, what do you call them, not slots, uh, sections of the ship. But it's much more difficult to set fires on the uh, first and fourth section. So it's very good to try to set two fires per ship and then just move on. At least um, as a DD at range. Not to mention I have a Lexington in range, so I might as well fire at her. I head closer to the Lexington as much as I can because... Um, well, it's said that, uh, what's it called? Uh, wow, a wither in nine minutes, less than nine minutes even, as an Udalai. Wow. That's a lot of fire damage. Yeah, a cyclone started, so I needed to head closer to the Lexington. So right now, actually, the Lexington might be out of range for quite a while. If she runs away from me in a straight line, it might take some... A significant amount of time for me to catch up since was the Lexington like 33 knots whereas my top speed is 44 this is with speed boost uh, which is going to only last 30 seconds more so our speed difference is only like 10 knots and uh, you know I need to make up three kilometers with a 10 knot speed that can take quite some time meanwhile though the, I believe it's the Lexington is burning which is very good for me in the damage department. If I can, like right now, we are significantly ahead because we have all three cap zones, but it is somewhat possible for the enemies to come back, but I think if I can take out the Lexington, the game is over. Or at least it should be. Hey, come on. I guess the good thing with hunting the Lexington in my current position is that... Uh, the Lexington is near the map edge, which means I can't do or she can't run away in a straight line so she had to like turn and stuff and there she is 7000 hp only so this is mine all mine because nothing else is in within spotting range and goodbye lexington and that's an arsonist too in 10 minutes 40 seconds the game is going to end in a moment as well. And there it goes. 
this was a very quick game and I did a, a stupendous amount of fire damage. 400,000 credits, 134,000 damage, 238 shell hits, Witherer, Arsonist, First Blood, 15 fires in 238 shell hits. This is some incredible fire RNG. 2200 uh, free experience, by the way. And I even got a capstone. 2100 base XP. Also, remember that this was a 10 minute 40 second game, and I got 2100 base XP. And all those, uh, all that damage as a destroyer. 79,000 fire damage in a game that lasted 10 minutes 41 seconds. That's incredible. The Lexington took a lot of damage from me. The Tirpitz took a lot of damage from me. The Yamata took a lot of damage from me. Fire damage accounted for almost 60% of my total damage this game. That is incredible. The amount of fires I had, that, that RNG is just incredible. And with this game I got my um, final 18th point on the Udalai Captain so I can go triple uh, tier 4 skills. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this microwave match because I did so much fire damage so quickly. And uh, I would like to thank the Patreons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, Captain Ramius. And I hope I see you guys next time.